rehearsing your problems and then talking to yourself? Amen. Come on, tell the truth. <laughs> this is church. You can tell the truth. Um, I call it spinning. You know? Because for me, it goes round and round and round she goes, and where she stops, nobody knows. And in the silent movies, the stock for movie actors, um, I loved when they show those films downtown, but the stock for movie actors going through this spinning is to hold their head with both hands, you know? It's like, um, like, like they're trying to stop the spin. Has that ever happened to you? Yeah. Huh? How am I going to get my kids Christmas this year and pay the rent? How can I afford the next semester in school? But if I don't keep plugging, will I be older than Moses when I graduate? <laughs> How can I tell my spouse that I spent the money we were saving on the vacation for the vacation to pay for the car repairs that get us to work? Or I've been in denial that I was gay when I got married, but I can't deny it anymore. How am I going to tell my wife or my husband or my kids? Or I've lost my job. Family thinks I'm going off to work every day. I was afraid to worry them. I've applied, I've spent every day applying for jobs, and I've applied everywhere I know to go, and there aren't any jobs out there for somebody my age. Or I hate my job, and I don't think I can stand going to that place one more day, and there are no more jobs out there. I don't know if I'm going to be able to make it to retirement age. What could I possibly do that would make them want me to take early retirement at 35? <laughs> or, 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 you know what I'm saying. You know? Or, or, my, my husband doesn't want to have kids until we're financially stable, but my clock is, is ticking. Do I stop taking the pill? And then that's surprised. <laughs> but he really wants to get married, but I just want to stay living together because I'm not sure. Or, I don't know how we're going to afford Christmas this year. I keep thinking, you know, we cut out the gym, we cut out all the extras, and, and there isn't anywhere else to cut. Anybody else ever have any of those nights where you're holding your head with both hands? And for me, God often works to give me direction while I'm sleeping. Like Joseph, it's not, it's not that I don't believe in God. But it's that I get this idea that God wants me to figure everything out for myself. I don't know where that comes from. Where coming to God is last ditch effort. But I have to find some balance about that. When my head is in the squirrel cage, I'm not going to figure anything out. Certainly not anything good. I, I, I think. That's where Joseph was, and God got hold of him in a dream. An angel. Remember, in the Bible, an angel simply means a messenger. It doesn't have to be anything with wings, you know. It could be another person. It can be a spiritual being. Why does God come to, to, with a solution to Joseph or to me when we're asleep? Why do you think God comes to your help when you're asleep? Let's you can't get your attention when you're awake. You know, that's, I mean, this is really, part of the, I, I am going, you know, if my head is going so fast, um, I don't leave room for God. And what was the solution? Joseph didn't need a sermon. He needed a message from God. Joseph didn't need a sleep aid. He needed a message from God. A message to slow down that hamster wheel. And sometimes I find the best way to turn things over to God is to use St. Paul's suggestion in Philippians. And he says, think of all the things that you're grateful for today. Think of everything that you're grateful for today. All the things that God has done for you. Everything that God has done in you. And then take that problem that's driving me crazy and wrap it in that blanket of all the good things that God has done for me all my life and turn it over to God and say, look, God, you know, this is bigger than I am. Just please handle it like you've handled all these other ones.
I'll trust you on this one too. It worked for Paul, it's worked for me. I'm not kidding. And, and so often, the message comes to me in the night. You know, after I've turned things over, the solution, the, 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 the answer to the dilemma comes to me in the night. And I don't know whether it's a dream sometimes, or I don't know whether it's even a thought. It doesn't come to me like a sentence ever. It doesn't come in a linear way. Uh, and I may not know completely what to do, but I get this idea about where to start. And I didn't have it when I went to bed. Um, and so in this dream, God's messenger says to Joseph, Joseph, don't hesitate to marry her. Her pregnancy is God-conceived. She will bring a son to birth, and when she does, Joseph, you will name him. And you will name him Jesus, which means God saves. Name him God saves, so that, that you'll always remember that. God saves. And, and Joseph woke up. I'll bet he did. Uh, uh, this was not the idea that he had planned in his dream. God reminds him of a scripture verse. And the verse is not that a woman having the baby in the scripture is a virgin. The, the point was that this baby that had born 700 years ago had something to do with the fact of Emmanuel, that God is with us. And in Mary's case, God is with her to have this baby. You know, I make it from every day to every tomorrow by remembering that God is doing for me today what I cannot do for myself. That's, that's how I make it through my days. I mean, it's not that I'm lazy. I try to do what I can do, but I know that God is doing for me what I cannot do for myself. And in this story, God is doing for Mary what she cannot do for herself. And God is doing for Joseph what he cannot do for himself. And with all his tossing and turning and holding his head in both hands, God's constant love for us and God's, God's care for the whole world, God's presence, God is with us to save us. That is to say, God is with us to change the direction in, in which life seems to be headed at this moment. The miracle is God with us, whatever it is that we need. God with us to make all things new. God with us in our dreams. God with us in the person of Jesus. God with us in the friend. That God, with the, God with me and all of you this week, you know? God with us in the stranger. God with us in the puppy, you know? That knows when you're sick or blue and just snuggles, you know? Just because he knows you need it. How does the puppy know that, you know? God is doing for Mary what Mary cannot do for herself. And the angel tells Joseph that in this baby, God is doing for him and for the world what we cannot do for ourselves. God is coming to be like us so that we can be like God. That's what Joseph learns. God is coming to be like us so that we can become like God. Matthew's Gospel begins with a genealogy tracing the heritage of the baby. And the baby grows up to bring God's love and life to person after ordinary person. Matthew's Jesus is the one that says, seek first the kingdom of God, turn the other cheek, go the extra mile. If you don't think that will get you nailed up, it will. <laughs> Blessed are you who are poor in spirit. Blessed are you that know your need for God. Matthew's Jesus says all those hard things, but the baby's name means God saves us. In other words, in the birth and life and teaching and death and resurrection of Jesus, God fills any gaps where we fall short. That's, that's the promise. At the end of Matthew's Gospel, after his death and resurrection, Jesus says to everybody that he's returning to God. And then he says to us, go into all the world. Go to the ends of the earth and tell this good news of God's love. And wherever you go, lo, I am with you always. So that's how Matthew's gospel begins and ends, that God is with us. Christmas isn't just a story about a baby being born a long time ago. It's about being God being at home, God being with, God being at home with Mary. It is about God being at home in Joseph's dream and in Joseph's trying to be a just man who gives life, not just a person who obeys the law. 
Christmas is the story about God being at home, in the stable, among the animals, and in the poorest of families, and with refugees, and immigrants for whom there is no room in the inn. If you can identify with any of that, God is with you. And the Christmas story is about God being at home in the lives of shepherds and outcasts, foreign kings and astrologers. Christmas is the story of God at home with us in the political intrigue of the Roman Empire, whatever form empire takes. And that this God will take a place. God is even at home with the crucified and not with the crucified. So what did Joseph do? Instead of figuring the way to put Mary out of his life at a safe distance, God invited Joseph to marry her. And further, to name the baby that wasn't his baby. In this culture, at the moment that Joseph names Jesus, it is the act, it is the act of the father when naming the child that says, this is my baby. He claims him as his son, and then he names him, God saves. I'm going to trust God in this thing, he says. And God entrusts the divine self to people. Had Mary said no, there would be no Christmas. But she said, let it be. Let it be to me, according to your word. Had Joseph said no, Mary would have been killed and the baby within her killed as well. But Joseph believed in a God who loves us so much that God will always be Emmanuel. God will always be with us in our troubles. God is with us in this blasted economy. God is with Joseph and Mary, the citizens, and Joseph and Mary, the wanderers in Bethlehem, and he's with Joseph and Mary, the undocumented immigrants, when they have to go to Egypt. God is with us in our worst difficulties, in our greatest joys. God is with us at the births of people that we love, and God is with us when we have to say goodbye to people that we love. Whether God comes to us in a dream or in a baby or with us, to the ends of the earth, God is with us, or with us on the next cross that we must bear. God will not abandon us. God will not abandon us in the struggle for justice, to work for fairer laws. God will not abandon us. He is the Prince of Peace who will work with us in our own struggle for peace. God will be with us to empty the tombs of the people we love and grant them a home forever. This is God with us. Christmas isn't just about a baby long ago. Christmas is about God with you, right here, right now, no matter what, and with everyone, no matter